Welcome back folks and welcome to a new Dragon's Dogma 2 news video. So today we have a lot of things to talk about including the global launch timings as well as the pre-order bonuses because some people have been asking if it's really worth to get these pre-order bonuses or which version of the game you should buy. So today we're going to be going through all of that. Now this is also going to be the final news video before the game drops. After that we're going to be talking about various guides, gameplay videos, first impressions and afterwards well I'm gonna have a new news video which is going to cover the release and everything which happens after that. Now before we get into everything else, first review for Dragon's Dogma 2 are out for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S and PC. And so far it is looking very good for the game itself. On PlayStation 5 it has the Metacritic of 84, on PC 92 and on Xbox Series X 87. And it does seem here that according to a lot of critics here that um, everything which made Dragon's Dogma 1 great, all of the basically formula when it comes to gameplay to how you play the game, how you gain new gear and basically level up your character and your vocation is pretty much going to stay here along with all of the other additions and making the world bigger as well. So for Capcom this is looking very very good. Keep in mind for all of the questions about my review, I wasn't really pursuing to get a review for this game, to be honest I just want to get into it and I will have my review after maybe a week or so as I play the game, but also keep in mind before that I will be going into various guides. So first things first, if we take a look at the global launch timing, uh, first off Steam of course, uh, for me it's gonna be launching at 1am Central European time, so on March 22nd. Now even though it says March 21st here, it does not mean that you're gonna be playing the game sooner than me, but it means that Steam is gonna be releasing the game at the same time, so if for me it's going to be 1 a.m. if you are in Los Angeles it's going to be 5 p.m. for you. So this means we're gonna be playing the game at the same time but well the time of the day is gonna be different depending on where you live. Now when it comes to consoles themselves or well PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S I believe this is going to launch at midnight where you live. So for example Toronto Midnight, London Midnight, Tokyo Midnight and so on. Now I'm not sure if you are gonna be able to go to New Zealand or Australia to play the game sooner because to be honest I haven't really ever done that on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S so I cannot tell you so maybe test it out and see if it's going to work. I know that was one of the strategies I did a long time ago for Fallout 4 when it was releasing. And also a quick reminder that if you have created your main pawn and the Arisen in the character creator for Dragon's Dogma 2, double check them before the game uh, releases to make sure that you are transferring the Arisen and the pawn which you actually want to transfer. Now when it comes to preload, this is one of the things which is confusing to me a little bit because uh, Capcom is not really known to provide you know preloads on PC especially and so far I do kind of think that um, at least for me maybe there is not going to be a preload on Steam so you know that's one thing to think about. Also I've seen some people say that um, preload is going to be available on the 20th. Now today is 20th for me and still nothing maybe it's still too early for that but just one thing to think about in general if you are on PC on Steam. So what about the prices? Well, it really is going to depend on your region equivalent price, but uh, for me it's going to be 65 euros for the, you know, base edition of the game and for the deluxe edition is going to be 75 euros. Honestly, the prices are a little bit strange, but it might be just the region equivalency and how they want to handle that. So if we go to Steam DB, Dragon's Dogma 2 and we check out the Steam price history, we can kind of see what the prices are going to be around what area, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is what you have to kind of take into account if you're going to be buying the game. Now when it comes to the pre-order bonuses, keep in mind for the standard edition, if you pre-order the game, you're going to be getting a superior weapons quartet. This does mean that uh, you're going to have a small edge compared to people who have not pre-ordered the game, so this is going to be your starting gear. But keep in mind, when it comes to starting gear in Dragon's Dogma games in general, 
you're going to go through it relatively fast. The only difference with the superior weapons quarter is going to be maybe you're going to be keeping those weapons a few hours longer than you would the base versions. So it's not really that you have to pay extra to get this, it's pretty much just a pre-order bonus, which is alright for me, but keep in mind there is a note down here saying the above bonus may also be available later. Now when it comes to the Lux Edition pre-order bonuses, you're gonna be getting the Superior Weapons Quartet and you're gonna be getting the Ring of Assurance. Now this is also called the Adventurer Safeguard and to be honest we still don't know what the actual ring is gonna be doing but if you ask me it's most likely going to be connected to something which is going to help you survive the combat a little bit longer in a sense because when it's a ring of assurance and especially if it's connected to the very early start of the game it could be a logical kind of conclusion to find. Now when it comes to the deluxe edition itself keep in mind this is not a pre-order bonus but this is a part of the deluxe edition which uh, as I said for me costs 75 euros so one of the main things you're gonna be getting is the camping gear the explorers camping kit you're gonna be getting uh, 1500 rift crystals points to spend beyond the rift and you're gonna be getting custom sounds or well dragon's dogma music and sound collection now so far only xbox is what i was able to find which provides some of the description of these items so this is what it says about the camping kit. Gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at shops in-game. Efficient without being undully weightly, this camping kit is favored by explorers traveling far afield. Now, of course, in the game you're gonna be able to set up camps themselves, but uh, keep in mind, you're gonna be able to get camping gear and all of that within the game itself so don't worry about it now as i already said you're gonna be getting the dragon's dogma music and sound collection which are custom sounds which honestly is probably one of the most appealing things for me which would make me buy the deluxe edition but uh, just keep in mind still you know it's more expensive besides that you're also going to get the harpy snare smoke beacons the harpy lore item and as it says in the description obtain three harpy snare smoke beacons which emit a scent inciting to harpies when lift in certain locations harpies within range will flock near you you may be able to grab hold on one and ascend to greater heights so yeah besides that you're also going to get the heartfelt pendant a thoughtful gift so you can basically gift this you know to people and you know we can deepen the bond between the giver and the receiver as they say here now in the game you're gonna be gifting a lot of stuff for different people to increase that affinity and uh, yeah i mean it's it's one of the things which is probably going to serve as a very nice bonus to people who you know get the deluxe edition to have a little bit more you know points to spend into affinity by gifting this to people or well to one person you're also going to get the ambivalent rift incense, the change pawn inclination. So, obtain an item which will change your pawn inclination once to a random one. These powered rift crystals can be used by your main pawn while camping and bird and incest. So what are inclinations? Inclinations are going to be behaviors that your pawn is going to emit. So, for example, when you're doing the dragon's dogma 2 character creator you were able to set how that companion is going to behave so the companion is either going to focus on supporting your you know group and trying to heal you or it's going to be more thoughtful by using tactics or it's maybe going to be a bit more aggressive and charge into combat head-on so this is pretty much what inclinations are the behavior of your pawn Next up, you're also going to be getting a makeshift Gaul key, or well, escape from Gaul. So this is a prison key. You're gonna be able to use it once if you end up in prison by attacking someone by mistake. Keep that in mind, it's gonna be happening to you, I'm pretty sure of that. And at the same time, you're gonna be able to buy these within the game itself and find them, so I wouldn't really worry about it. Now, in a sense, this is basically a free get out of a jail card. Next up, you're gonna be getting the Art of Metamorphosis, the character editor, and as it says here, obtain an item that allows the Arisen to edit their own appearance or the appearance of a pawn. It can be used only once when visiting a Barbary. 
And with that, you're gonna be getting a Wake Stone, which is Restore the Dead to Life. It's one of the things you can definitely do in this game, and keep in mind, you're gonna be finding more Wake Stones throughout the game. This is not going to be the only one. And as they said, if one of the character dies, like some of the maybe NPCs, they're not going to respawn anymore, but they're going to be sent to the morgue. And you will have a few days to revive them with a Wake Stone before they are well gone forever, so it's kinda useful to have one, but at the same time you're gonna be able to find them within the game itself. And as I said, you're gonna be getting 1500 Rift Crystals, which can be used within the Rift to actually get, you know, stronger pawns and to have them in your party. But also keep in mind that in um, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, these uh, Rift Crystals were also used to rarify Dragonforged items. But I'm not sure how it's going to be done here, we shall obviously see once the game comes out, but just one thing to keep in mind. Also, keep in mind that 1500 Rift Crystals is not that much, especially because if your pawns get hired by other people, you're gonna be getting a lot more back. So overall, would I recommend the Deluxe Edition? Well, to be honest, I didn't get one. I got myself a basic, like, normal edition of the game, because I'm pretty sure that all of these things, well, I'm gonna be able to find within the game itself. The only reason maybe would be the Dragon's Dogma music and sound collection, but again, when I see like some items are also available in-game, obviously, as I was saying, and contents may change without previous notice, so yeah, that's also one of the things to think about, especially because these bonuses may also be available later. Ultimately, it's up to you and uh, your money. And also for the end, one more quote from Hideaki Itsuno, and he said this, We have decided to design the map in a way that the journey could be enjoyed on foot. Fast travel, however, exists uh, through the both ferry stones and port crystals, as well, as well as the riding an ox cart between two locations. Ferry stones are supplied in a balanced way. Definitely good, and uh, I like this. I like this choice a lot. And this is everything for today, thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed this don't forget to click that like and subscribe button for more, I will be covering Dragon's Dogma 2 a lot after release, covering all of the details going from guides, lore videos as I said, and all of the other gameplay videos and other fun videos to cover. Huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters, and as always, stay classy everyone and bye bye.